everyone, it's Jennifer from FiberFlux. In this video, we're going to cover part three of the temperature blanket. Now, I've had a lot of requests as we are building our temperature squares. Um, some of you wanted to see how to continue on to row two and how to join your squares into an area that's in between other squares. So we're going to go through all that in this video. But just as a quick recap, there was part one where we talked about the supplies and how to get organized and things like that. In part two of our video, we covered how to create a multicolor square and also, if we come down here, how to create a solid square. And then finally, we learned how to join all of these together. We're going to be using the join as you go technique, which is a really nice way to connect these as you go along, especially for a large year-long project like this. So for today's tutorial, um, we're going to begin row two. Now I have row one, and it has some really nice width on it. It's a very nice wide blanket, so it'll give you a lot of coverage in the winter uh, next year when you're finished. Um, and I also have my little chart for today that helps me uh, determine which color goes with which temperature. And then in uh, the other temperature videos, we covered the, the calendar. So I'm up to the 18th, which is where our new row will begin. Remember, we're doing 18 squares by 21 squares to create our blanket, okay? So I just wanted to show you my little kind of method that I've been using. Now, a lot of you have been sharing what you like to use as your method, um, and I love hearing all of your ideas, so many great ideas. So for mine, what I've been doing is I have this grid paper, and I talk about this in more detail in the other temperature videos, but um, as I make the squares, I've been making a couple of the color squares at a time, and I do the colors based on uh, the temperature that I've looked up. And sometimes I'll look at the forecast, sometimes I go back and look at the history, depending on how much catching up I have to do. Um, but as I make them, I've been using this binder ring to hold them together, and I have them in order. So if we look at our calendar, uh, this is the turquoise, or turqua and the delft is uh, going to be my, where am I here? Oh, I'm sorry. We're back here at the 18th. So my next square will be aqua blue. If we flip it over, spring green, aqua, uh, spring green, orchid. That was a cold day. And then uh, delft lavender. So as I've been making them, I use this binder ring to hold them together in order. And I find that that's been really helpful. Uh, if you don't have a binder ring, you could use a little piece of scrap yarn. Okay. The other thing I've been doing to keep me uh, nice and organized is um, as I've been making the squares, and I deliberately held off doing this so I could show you, as I've been making the squares, I've been writing the number, you can look at your calendar for reference, so I've been writing the number in pen, so that's 18, this is 19, this is 20, and this is 21. And then after they're connected to the blanket, so if we go back here to 17, once I put 17 on, I color it in. So once something has a number and a color, I'll know that it's actually on the blanket, okay? So sometimes if you like to work ahead and make a couple squares at a time like I'm doing, you might want to write that in in pen, and then as you attach them, color it in. So we're going to be able to color 18 in today because we're going to learn how to begin the next row. And the rest of the squares are pretty much the same way. And then I also mark it on my calendar as well. So you might not want to do all this kind of organizational stuff like I'm doing, but I really find that it's helpful. And I'm uh, the kind of person that really loves to uh, check things off of a list. So that part is really fun for me. Okay, so uh, just as a reminder, we're using Red Heart Super Saver, and I have the white here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go back down here. Now, that uh, brings up another thing I wanted to mention. A lot of you have been asking me, um, how do you set up your rows? Do you want to can start here? and kind of snake around like an S, like come around and make this 18? Or do you want to go in rows like how you would read a book? Now, that is definitely a personal preference. There is no right or wrong answer to that. It's really what you prefer to do. Um, I originally thought, and I think I may have answered one of your questions in the Ravelry group, how I was doing it. I originally thought I was going to snake it around and make uh, like an S and go all the way down my blanket. But I thought 
I changed my mind. So I thought that when I look at my calendar, my calendar is set up in rows. So I kind of wanted to set up my blanket the same way. So it doesn't look like a calendar because my rows are longer than my calendar's rows, but the way the color is going to play out will kind of be like a calendar. So again, no right or wrong answer, and I'm actually curious to see if you want to snake around or if you want to do it in rows. Share below. I'm really curious to see what your thoughts are about that too. But I'm going to work mine in rows. Even though I said I was going to snake it around, I, I decided to change my mind. And that's the beauty of making your own projects. Okay, so I'm going to grab my binder ring and my next square is already waiting for me on top. And then as I make more squares, I can just simply keep adding them to the back. And again, you can use a piece of scrap yarn if you like, or even if you have a large stitch marker too. Okay, so what I like to do is grab my scissors and just, I like to give my ends a trim before I put it on there. And we covered this a little bit in the last temperature video. Now this one um, will get woven in as we go along, so we don't really have to worry about this um, outer tail. Okay, so grab your white yarn. And what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, sometimes I like to position mine. So that helps me know where to start. So let me just slide all this up just a little bit for you. And um, we're going to be joining here, here to here, here to here, here to here, okay? So I'm going to start down at this bottom corner because I, I like to get some stitches going before I'm, I'm beginning the join. It just is a little bit easier to manage. So I'm going to grab, now we're using the um, eye crochet hook. Okay, so we're going to insert the hook into any corner space. Same thing we've been doing. So if you've made a couple of these by now, this will seem like second nature. If you're watching all of these temperature um, videos for the first time and you're not sure how to make the squares, go back to part two and I have all that there. Okay, so we're just tying the new yarn on. The join as we go yarn for the one I'm doing, um, if we go back to our chart, is in the white. Um, if you're using a different color, I would love to hear about it, so share in the comments below. Okay, so we're just going to work our um, white yarn around the edge like we have been doing already. So chain three, one, two, three, work two double crochets. I also wanted to point out I'm still using the eye hook. I think I'm using a different hook than I used in the last tutorial video, but it's still the eye hook. All right, and we're going to get our corner worked. So chain three, two double crochet, chain one, three double crochet, chain one, work three double crochet in the side, one, two, and three, chain one. Now we're getting ready to join again. So we are going to uh, work half of that corner like we've done in the past. Wait, I think I, oh, I did my chain one. Okay. So work three double crochet, one, two, and you know what? I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit so you can see what I'm doing here. And three. Now, when you have two squares, I think I may have mentioned this very briefly before. When you have two squares like this, if you were to go into this corner space or this corner space, it would be off center. So what you need to do when you're joining one to two squares like this is open it up a little bit and go into that middle space, okay? And that will keep it nice and centered for you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our hook, go in from the top, reach back, scoop up the yarn, same thing we've been doing to join, Bring that loop through the loop that's already on your hook, and now we're joined. So then kind of flip this out of the way and work your other three double crochets. So one, two, and three, okay? Now we're ready to join again, and we're just gonna be doing this the same way we've been doing, okay? It's just that one join that was, um, a little bit different, okay? So what we're gonna do is work our three double crochets, one, two, three. Now come in from the top, work your next join. Now all this is kind of a uh, review or refresher of what we've been doing. You're at your next corner. So three double crochet, one, two, 
three. We're ready to join once more in that other corner. And these are just regular joins that we're doing. So one, two, whoops, I dropped my stitch. Let's go back and do that again. I don't know if that ever happens to you, but whenever I do it, I just back up and redo it, okay? So we got our next one, and then we're just going all the way around. And see that tail? We're gonna weave that in when we get to it. So one, two, three, chain one, work that corner. One, two, whoops, I did it again. I'm not used to using these metal hooks. It must be the hook. I'll just blame the hook. So one, two, three, chain one, and then three double crochet. One, two, and three, chain one, and now we're in the home stretch. One, two, and three, chain one, and then join with a slip stitch to close the round, just like that, okay? Okay, so our square is joined, and we uh, are officially beginning the next row. Now, one more thing you might encounter. We're gonna go ahead and join another square on because I wanted to show you, um, we're also going to encounter joining here where there's three squares as well. But before we start that, I finished square 18. So I'm gonna go ahead and color in my block because this keeps me nice and organized. And also I'm going to take my 18 square and I'm gonna X that out to indicate that I'm finished with that. So now we can go on to square 19. Okay, so let's do square 19 also so I can show you that middle part. So if we go back to our calendar, we can see, I always double check it, even though um, I have them bundled up and they're in order, I always just double check. So this is the spring green center and the turqua outside, okay? So we're right on track. We got the correct one. It's easier just to quickly check first than have to pull it out if it's the wrong one, okay? So we have that one. Once again, let's give it a little trim. Get all our little tails. And then this last one, um, like you saw before, we'll be able to weave that in as we go. Okay, so grab some white yarn. And what we're gonna do is this one actually presents um, two different joins. One that we have just did over here, one in between two squares, but then when we go to the three squares, I'll show you that too. All right, so let's pull this through, tie it right on. So once we get this square joined on, you'll be able to encounter any square in the whole blanket and know exactly how to handle it, okay? So I know we've done some join as you go projects, but sometimes it can be a lot to kind of manage when you're doing all these squares and there's ends everywhere. So let's get started on the square. We're gonna uh, kind of position it this way. So when we come up to the side here, I'll show you the first join and then the second join of the corners, okay? So bring up a loop, once again, chain three. Work your two double crochets. Again, if you need to see this part with how to make the actual squares, I go much slower in part two of the temperature project, okay? We're kind of glossing over this part because we covered that in the last video. Okay, so do your corner the same way you've been doing. Chain three, two double crochet, chain one, three double crochet. Chain one, work your side, three double crochet, one, two, and three. Now, we're gonna be approaching a join, so we're gonna chain one and just work half of that corner. One, two, and three. All right, so just like last time, we're gonna go in the middle, that middle space, reach back with your hook, bring up that loop, and slip stitch it right on there, okay? Now we're gonna come back, 
and work our three double crochets. One, two, and three. Or do a join. It's like a regular join that we've done before. And work three double crochets. One, two, three. Okay, work your join, your next join. And now we're coming up to that spot where those three squares are coming together, okay? So go ahead and work half of the corner. One, two, three. Okay, so before when we joined into two, we kind of went in between that space there. And using one color around all these makes it very forgiving, okay? So as you're, if you're learning how to do join as you go, um, a lot of this is going to blend. So don't worry too much. Um, so what we're going to do, though, because we don't have two, if we were to try to go here, there's another square there. So what we need to do is just go into the middle. And you can kind of spread it out a little bit. And what you're going to do is take your hook and just go right in the middle. You'll find yourself a loop. See that? So I found a loop. Reach back with your hook. Pull up the yarn. Now bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. It might be a little tight. You might have to drill in there with your hook a little bit. Just because there's so much happening right here. There's so many stitches. There's three squares. You might just have to drill it in there a little bit. But as long as you're in the center and things don't get off center, you'll be just fine. Okay, so finish up that corner with three double crochet. One. two, three. Now you're just going to join the same way we've been doing, okay? Because we're just doing joining two squares now. Okay, so slip stitch them together, then work your three double crochets. We're also approaching a tail, so we're going to hold that tail along the edges we work. So one, two, three. Got to join again, so join into the next space of the next, the other square rather, and then we'll hold that tail along the edge. So as you work your first three double crochets of the corner, you can hold that tail. One, two, three, and then go into that corner space, bring up a loop, make your last join of this round. Finish off that corner with three double crochet. One, two, three, and now we're just working our square like normal. So chain one, work that last side, three double crochet. One, two, three, chain one. Now count three chains up, join with a slip stitch, and fasten off, okay? Okay, so now you have every uh, situation you might encounter and you have joining one square to another, joining one square onto two squares, and joining one square onto three squares. So for the rest of your blanket, every single square, um, you know, will be one of these three situations. The other thing I wanted to point out before we uh, depart, before the spring update, and I'll share the blanket once we uh, head into spring and there's more squares on here, is um, dipping. So in between your squares here, you might see a little bit of a dip. That is perfectly normal. That's one of two things. The first thing is because the squares that we make don't have 90 degree angles like, you know, a sheet of paper would have. So there is some roundness to uh, granny square corners, um, and that is apparent here. Also, when we join, uh, we're joining with slip stitches, which are a little bit... Um, smaller than these chains. The chains kind of uh, open it up, the, the slip stitch pulls it down a little bit. So um, later on at the end of the year, I'm going to show you, I think I mentioned this before, but I'm going to also have a tutorial at the end of the year on how to put an easy granny border around your blanket. You can do it in one of the colors, you can do it in every single color, um, but 
putting a border on a blanket like this with well, anytime you have motifs is a great idea because it'll get everything nice and flat and even and line everything up. So if you're seeing that as you're joining on the squares, don't worry, it's perfectly normal and we're going to put an easy matching granny border on this at the end of the year. Um, so that's everything. That is everything you need to know to make this blanket. I really appreciate your comments and if you're having trouble, like uh, some people weren't sure how to add these next squares and uh, mentioned it in the comments and in the forum group. So I find that very helpful and it helps me know which videos that you may like. So every time you have suggestions or you need help with something, please um, share that in the links below or in our crochet along group and I'll be sure to make a video to help you out. That is all for today, and if you're not in the Ravelry Crochet Along group, please hop on there and join us. You can share your photos, your progress, you can get help, you can um, help other people if you are a crochet expert. And um, I will see you in the spring, and we'll have lots more squares on here then. And in the meantime, if you're not subscribed to the channel, be sure and subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the spring with our 2019 Fiberflux Temperature Blanket. Good luck, everyone, and I'm loving all the photos. Keep them coming. Bye, everyone.